this is a dangerous group that groups that we're dealing with now. None of them knew they were robots target locked. YouTube fam it's been a while since I made a video I do apologize for that um, busy with a lot of stuff lately but I will say this man we got to get up on this flat earth stuff okay so lots of theories been coming out that the earth might be flat you know people flying up in the sky looking at the horizon seeing that the horizon is mostly horizontal instead of round um, let me tell you why I think there might be some type of truth to the flat earth theory but also why I don't agree with it okay so number one why I agree why well, I can say I disagree with it okay so you flying simply up in the sky and not seeing the curvature of the earth if the earth is as big as we say it is you're not going to see an immediate curvature, okay? Even if you fly high up in the sky, you will literally have to get to the point where you start to go into space. But also as well, there's if there is any footage, I haven't seen it. Myself personally, I haven't seen any documented footage of any ships, uh, uh, you know, space flight ships or anything like that or any objects leaving Earth and going into space. Now, they say we have satellites up there, but remember the satellites are still positioned within what we call, what flat earthers would call the dome, anyways. Okay, so let's 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 look at the definite. Let's go to Wikipedia, look at the definition of flat Earth. Okay, so here we are. We at Wikipedia. Okay, so flat Earth theory is an uh, archaic and scientifically disproven conception of the earth's shape as a plane or disk many ancient cultures subscribe to a flat earth cosmography okay here's the thing they said it's been disproven but who disproved it let's go ahead and look said so the ideal for spherical earth appeared in ancient greece philosophy with pythagoras okay before i go any further I don't know why history keep thinking that white people came up with the ideas for everything, that they came up with the philosophies for everything, that they came up with the scientific knowledge for everything. Here's the thing. If I'm rich and I have infinite energy, right? Like I'm just get I like got gas. I'm just using natural gas, right? And I have an abundance of it. Just because I'm smart and rich doesn't mean I'm going to invent a solar power array when I have no need for it. Though most of the inventors, most of people who invent stuff, they invent stuff out of necessity and need. Rarely do they invent stuff because, oh, I had an idea. So the thing is to say that you have to be knowledgeable or live in a certain way in order to come up with solutions and theories to stuff is beyond me especially since Pythagoras Pythagorean theorem and all that can be traced back to ancient Africa not only that but when you look at it most of the teachings that Greek philosophers speak of today came from ancient Kemet and Imhotep so we're, we're going to get on that later because there's going to be lots of people out there say I studied this and that did you study the truth from the people where the truth come from or did you study it from somebody who claims of a different skin color a different background a different heritage that they know the truth think about it why would I believe what a um, 
how can I put this? Uh, why would I believe what one race has to say about another race's history? But you say that that race don't know their own history. So make that make sense. That's like saying that I'm going to tell you about Asian history and culture and say, well, they got it wrong, but I got it right. That's the problem with history today is that we're too busy believing people who are not of that culture and who have nothing to gain from that culture, but have many advantages to putting down that culture and many advantages to gain from destroying that culture in said culture. Just saying. Okay, now that I got that out the way, that was a little small rant. I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and go in here. Okay, so Aristotle and all that stuff, we're not going to go with that because here, here's the thing. Reason why a lot of people believe in the flat earth theory. Okay, now we're going to the West Asian part. It says in early Egyptian, okay, and Mesopotamian thought, the, the world was portrayed as a disc floating in the ocean. A similar model is found in a uh, Homeric account from uh, 18th century BC. Okay, so let's go see what the Bible says about it. Okay, um, first of all, this being a possible rendition, we already know that's false. But anyways, um, that was of the known world at that time. I'm trying to see if I can find what I was looking for, bro. Like. These are different cultures and stuff like that. What they believe the flat earth to be. Um, this is actually an interesting one. Uh, Europe in the middle early ages. How the 19th century. Mocambrian cosmic diagram. Showing the sphere of the earth. At the center. So sphere of earth center. With all these. Why is Aries the only one that's filled out right there. And then around it. Like a, a clock. Is the 12 zodiacs. Okay, Asia, we got that. Also, we want to look into where we got the 12 zodiacs from because there's no way we ourselves created like 12 zodiacs. That's got to come from somewhere, bro. It's got to come from somewhere. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of people that believe the earth was flat. I'm trying to see what it is say in the Bible about the earth being flat. Okay, so let's look up. history uh let's see here well you already seen some of it anyways but anyways it's whatever okay so uh bible says about flat earth <sighs> let's see here okay so this is a very good website go to if you got a lot of question uh Christian questions that you want to ask, you can go ahead and go there. Um, almost slipped up on that. I think a lot of people slip up when they put those words together. But if Christians have a lot of questions to be asking about the uh, Bible, this is where they can definitely go. It seems like a good source of uh, your questions, biblical answers. It says, Does the Bible teach that the earth is flat? Here's the answer. Now it says here that many skeptics. Uh, claim that the Bible depicts a flat earth. Now, in the scriptural references, such as Revelation, it says it's cited for, um, it says cited, which speaks of four angels standing at the corner, four corners of the earth. Now, when it's saying four corners of the earth, that doesn't necessarily mean that the earth is like a flat square and that they're literally standing at each corner. I think what they mean by four corners is they're talking about the directionals, north, south, east, and west, okay? The four cardinal directions just like up down left and right cardinal direction okay it's a direction which can explain um a 2d space okay now in order to explain a 3d space it like you have x and y which explains the 2d space because x and y can go up and down or left and right you need a third one which is a z axis which can go forward and backwards that way you you can explain the whole thing so technically what if we don't have just north south east and west what if we actually have two more directions that may be cardinal of the sea that don't go in either of the directions? That that may be a good thing right there to look at too. And what are those directions called in order to sustain and describe a three D space? Um, ooh, let's look at this. What what this is? It says critics also point to Psalms, 
75.3, which says, God's hold the pillars of the earth firm. Other messages they claim uh, teach the flat earth are Deuteronomy, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs. I'll let you go ahead and look at that if you want to pause the video. So you can go ahead and look at those verses. All of which reference to ends of the earth. Um, oh, it, it shows it here. Okay, so you, I'm, I'm going to put it up here on the screen for a few seconds. So you can go ahead and pause at each one. Here's Psalms. Deuteronomy. Uh, Job. Psalms. And Proverbs. Now, my theory is when they describe ends of the earth, they could be talking about like an actual landmass itself. I didn't show Proverbs up there long enough. They could be talking about an actual landmass. All right, I'm going to let you go ahead and get enough time to pause on that one. Okay. So, it, it couldn't be talking about directionally the end of the actual earth itself. It could be talking about earth as in landmass that's on this planet. That also could be another thing that it's looking at too. And it says, uh, is the Bible anti-science in its teachings that the earth is flat? Okay, so here's the thing. Plenty of people have said that NASA images of the earth are fake. All right. So let's look at another flat earth theory. We're going to look at, this is physics world right here. Uh, flat earth theory. Um, this is taken from the uh, July 14th, 2020 issue of physics worlds um so basically here's a model of the flat earth that we're looking at now here's the thing this is the reason why i love this particular model and i'm gonna tell you why why is it that nobody can explore antarctica why why can't nobody explore antarctica one number two when you look at images of the earth why does it show almost all the continents and we'll get to that in a second. But now this is a really good theory. My theory is flat earthers may have some sort of point. OK, now we talk about the firmness above the water and I'm going to get into that later because I got some boss level stuff I want to talk about on that alone. So when we look at this flat earth model here, OK, let's go with the with the mouse right here. Now, this is supposed to be all of Antarctica. Ar Antarctica is supposed to be a literal ice wall that separates you from literally going off the edge of the earth. Now, here's the thing. If I go to Antarctica and this model is true, that means that when I try to go towards the center of Antarctica, I should get to a point where there is a wall that allows me to see either an infinite amount of either blue space or air. I literally had dreams about this, so that's why it's scary. Or I should be seeing space itself. If I'm getting close to the edge of the dome, you see what I'm saying? So if I'm getting like, like say for instance, this is Antarctica and then you got the dome wall right here that's going up. If I get to the edge of Antarctica, should I see space? If we're looking at this particular model as being the way it is. And also as well, we say how the sun goes from the east to the west, but in some incidents, the sun don't go to the east to the west. Now, Here's the thing we can, we're also going to look up the round earth and prove that the earth may also be round as well. Okay, so when we're on flat earth, when the sun's going overhead, where's the equator at? So we say we got an equator where it's supposed to be hottest at. Now, here's the thing. Wouldn't it be hottest along this line if the flat earth theory was true? The line that the sun would travel, right? Because if we look at this map, Let's say this is around March or no, the winter months, right? So over here, let's see, is that that's North America? That's Africa. Now, Africa is the hottest. So are we saying the sun travels over this way for most of the year? And then when it gets, you know, summertime, it travels directly overhead. Like, think about it. If during the winter time, the reason why it's so cold in our area and especially North American region is is the if the earth is flat wouldn't the sun have to travel right in this pattern right here 
thereby making Af Africa hotter during our winter months. And then during our summer months, it travels almost directly overhead, making it warmer climate while being cooler in Africa, if this flat earth model was true, right? Um, and then we got the moon. So is, is the sun traveling overhead and going around and coming back? Or how is the sun being traveled? Do we gotta look at that too if we're looking at the earth as actually being flat? How is the sun traveling? How are we having four different seasons? Because the only way I can see us having different seasons is if the world was actually a sphere. And I'll see. I'll tell you why in a minute. And the sun wants to come as soon as I say that. Wow, really? Okay. So let, let's look at it like this. We got to look at it from that point of view. Okay? Now let's look at another picture. I think I got another picture up here. Boom. Let's see. Our flat earthers being serious. This is funny. Because this is last updated. Okay, so this is by Stephanie uh, Pappas. I, if I butchered her last name, I do apologize. Um, she updated this January 27th of 2023. Uh, this is from the Live Science website. It says, Flat Earthers believe one of the most curious conspiracy theories on the internet. Here's a look at what they believe and why. See, here's my thing, though. Now look at this image. Can we can we zoom in on that image? I don't think we can. Look at this image. What would make one side of the earth dark and the other side of the earth bright? Because when you look at the cameras, right, of countries that show live feed compared to where you're at, it's dark in that area. If the earth was flat, all the earth would be light at once, wouldn't it? Even if the sun was traveling in a different pattern during different seasons, wouldn't there be some point in which all the earth is lit, is well lit by a sun that's going to be overhead? If the earth was flat? Why, why are we not looking at that? Why are we not thinking about that? A lot of flat earthers say, oh, the earth is flat because they don't have it. But you're not looking at the patterning and the movements of the sun. If the sun was literally overhead, over the North Pole, let's say the North Pole is directly in the middle, right? And the sun was directly overhead, the North Pole. So you got, let me see if I can use this mic as a, as a, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm going to move it up. So say, for instance, this is the earth, right? The North Pole is in the middle. If the sun's moving up ahead at noon, wouldn't it shine on the entire planet at the same time? So why is it that we got live feeds of different places where if it's dark here in North America, it's light over there and vice versa? I don't think the flat earthers thought about that when they came up with that though. But that's what I'm just saying. Uh, let's see here. I mean, maybe they just look at the horizon like the flat earth, you know, this and that. But that doesn't explain why we don't have any video of us going up into space. That's not explaining that. That's not explaining the reason why um, we rarely see a footage of an actual rocket going up into space. Um, it also doesn't explain the reason why... Um, what am I trying to get at? It also doesn't explain the, the reason why. You know what? We're going to get on the moon in a second. I think that's what I was thinking about. But let's keep going here. Okay. That That's just my thing. My thing is this. There's too much to say that the earth may not be flat. Especially the whole sun thing. If flat earthers can explain that, I'll look into that. But that's... That's going to be very hard to explain. Like the sun is right now. If the earth was flat, that would mean that all of this, all the earth right now will be well lit. If I can pull up a live feed, which you can do on a TikTok app, it always shows a live feed, I think, of a city in China. It's dark. It's nighttime. So... Yeah, only way for that to be true, for it to be nighttime there and the earth still be flat, is if it was concave with a dome over it. Not completely flat, but kind of concave. Because then, with that concave, if the sun's over here, 
then it'd be dark over here. And that ex but that still doesn't explain why some days are longer than others. So if the sur Earth is actually a sphere and it's tilt on the axis and it's constantly tilt on the axis as it's going around this sun, that would basically prove not only the four seasons for existing because it's still tilted at this axis, but if I got North America right here, and I wish I had a ball to show this with, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, say, for instance, this is the North Pole and the South Pole, which we already know they're actually reversed, but for sake of video. North America's in this section right here. So if the sun's right here, and the earth is going around like this, we're going to experience summertime, right? That makes sense. Just like if we're going this way and North America is still here, but it's further away from the sun at an angle, then we're going to experience wintertime. So unless the flat earthers have a way to explain that, I can't see how that would, I can't see how that would work. Um, let's see here. No one knows how many flat earth believers are out there. Because there is at a point where I was like, okay, maybe the flat earth theory might be real. But then me, being who I am, I started questioning certain things about possibilities that I see personally with my own eyes versus a flat earth theory. Okay, so, and I don't even know if the flat earthers are really even looking at that part of it. Okay, let's get another flat earth theory. Uh, thing up here. Okay. Two dimensional maps show the Earth is flat because it's impossible to show the entire surface with a photograph of a single globe. That is true. You're not going to. When you have a globe, you're not going to be able to see the whole Earth. But when you look at this globe, it kind of explains the same thing. Now, look at this light right here. This old oh, is a really good video, matter of fact. So, say for instance, this light that's up here, that's where the sunlight's coming from. The sunlight's beaming down right here, right? And this is just the angle. Look what's dark. This surface area underneath here is dark. But if it was flat, wouldn't all this be lit up? If it was flat instead of a circle and the light was protruding down on it, wouldn't all that be lit up? Uh, okay. I was looking for this video to actually support the flat earther, but it looks like I'm not really doing a good job. So when we look at this, okay, it's not letting me move. Okay, whatever. So it's the same thing here. Where is these dark spaces coming from? Where is these dark areas coming from? Like, no, nobody's explaining that. It's part of the dome that moves overhead. Or maybe, if we want to be in support of the flat earth, maybe the sun is not moving at all. Maybe there's an actual, maybe the earth is flat, the sun is not moving at all, but there's a screen or maybe water that kind of moves overhead. But that still wouldn't explain how you see stars either. So maybe there's some type of dome that's overhead that moves every now and then the cover of the sun up on certain parts while letting the sun be lit on others and it kind of rotates every single time. It's like this small section that blocks out the sun or something like that and it moves with the sun to give an image that the sun is actually moving when it's really not. I don't know. Maybe it's doing that. Let's look at some more flat earth. Now here's a good one. Now look at this. The sun's right there, right? What did I just got through saying? This, this, let me see if I can pull this actual painting up. And it's not letting us do it. Round Earth clues: How science proved that our home is a globe. I, I already said how I think it is, but we're going to read that part of argument too. Um, now, this is the sun right here, right? They claim this is the dome. They claim the Earth is flat. Now, this sun is lighting up almost all the planet, right? Except for the southern part, which then it turns once the sun reaches center of the mass of earth all the earth will be lit up at the same time so unless it's daylight in every single country at the exact same time the earth is not flat i literally was making the video to support the flat earth theory and then start realizing myself like yeah it's probably it's probably a globe it, i wouldn't say it's perfectly round it's probably like just a chunk of mass but i mean even then even if the globe 
you can still have a ferment around the globe. It's like throwing a marble into water with a thin film over it. You can still do the exact same thing. And either way it go, since Earth has a center uh, 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 core that can produce gravity or give an effect of gravitational pull towards it, because remember, we kind of got a mini sun at the core of our Earth that helps keep you know, the Earth warm as well. Um, maybe that small sun that's in the middle of our Earth creating its own gravitational pull that keeps us from flying off the planet. So, it's a lot of stuff to say, man. It's a lot of stuff to say. I really don't want to make this video an hour long. Okay, so it says here, clues of how science can prove that the Earth is round. It's probably the same thing I'm talking about. Hop on a plane and fly to Cape Town, South Africa, or Melbourne, Australia, two major cities located in the Southern Hemisphere. There you won't be able to see the North Star. Okay, so that's one thing. You won't be able to see the North Star. But then again, if the Earth is flat and the North Star is right here, this area right, that star right there, they will be able to see it, but you still wouldn't technically be able to see it because it's too further over this way. So if the North Star is over here, like if you got a flat surface, let's say you're on a flat surface, and let's say there's something right here. These people are going to be able to see it, but the further out you go, the less likely you are to see it. Because then, when you're looking at it, it's, that's why I said that the Earth got to have some type of curvature to it, not completely flat. It's got to have some type of curvature to it. So if the Earth is like this, but the top of it is kind of curvature, like a dome, like this dome right here, then it would make sense. Then it would make sense if North America was right here and um, Africa was right here and the North Star was like right here, they wouldn't be able to see the North Star because the center of the dome, which is the equator, would keep them from seeing the North Star. So there's no way the Earth can be completely flat. So if it was concave like this, that would make sense. I probably said that wrong. But you know what I mean. If it was domed like this on the Earth's surface, that would make sense. But being completely flat, that wouldn't make sense. The same thing with the sun. If the sun's right here, moving overhead in this direction, you know, if this was uh, east and this was west and it moves overhead, you still can simulate nighttime right here while it's daytime over here if that Earth was curved like that. But not if it's flat. Okay, let's see here. Behind the curve. Now, I do believe there's a ferment. And I believe, like, you know, that part right there. But let's see here. Okay. How do we know scientifically the Earth is a sphere? Very basic level. We can see the Earth's curvature through satellites that we launched into space. Okay, first off, I'm not going to believe anything the satellites say. I've flown on planes before. And I've seen where the Earth is like this, almost flat, but towards the end of your field of vision, it kind of curves a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Through those high-powered telescopes, we've been able to examine planets, both in our solar system and beyond. See, here's the thing. Us looking at a satellite, I can, or a telescope, I can use a telescope to look out the window and say, oh, I see that tree over there. But if it's all flat, of course, objects further away look smaller. So I can look out the window, look at that, and think that, oh, that might be 3D space, but it not actually be 3D space. Like, for example, me right here as you're looking through the camera. You're looking at me on a flat screen. You're not looking at me in actual 3D. But you're assuming that I'm 3D because you live in the same 3D type of universe. But on your screen, it looks flat so that wall looks further back than I am because closer the object is the larger it shows so using a high power telescope yeah you can see something that looks like oh that's that's probably Venus oh there's Mars right there look how far away they are They're about you know 123 million miles away how the f would you even be able to measure that I hate when NASA does that the earth is 93 million miles away how would you measure that bro did you just send a satellite out there to just say, hey, we're going to have you go straight toward the sun. We're going to count every single meter that you take. 
No, we're guessing. It's not actually 93 million miles away. We're guessing. And far as other people saying, well, we use other objects in the universe in order to measure through the sun. Well, how would you measure those objects to begin with in the first place? Like I said, we're, we're just guessing. We're guessing right now. Because far as we know, that sun could be bigger or smaller or closer or further than it actually really is. Where do you think we got that information from? <coughs> Aliens. Okay, so it says here, this is a very deep fundamental reason why the Earth is round. The force of gravity depends upon the distance between two interacting objects. And the only three-dimensional object you can make with a singular distance is a sphere. Let's see here. Not really true, but okay. We can measure the behavior of gravity in a laboratory with a variety of highly sensitive experiments. But you can also do the thing. Okay. If, on the other hand, you wanted to form a flattened object using gravity alone, the force of the gravity would depend upon two particular distances. Now, the reason why I disagree on this is because there are literally areas on the Earth where the gravity is almost none. Yes, real places on Earth. Uh, it's a cave they talked about years ago where you go into the cave and it's almost no gravity in there. It's somewhere in North America. And there's other places where the gravity is so strong and so intense that man really can't go there so we can't just use that as an example if on the other hand you want to form a flattened object using gravity alone the force of the gravity we have to depend upon two particular distances in two particular directions okay um let's see here what clues to the thinking blah, blah, blah. We're, I'm tired of talking about Greeks, man. They act like Greeks discovered everything. All this information existed long before the Greeks got here. If you go look at ancient Kemen in ancient Africa, they mapped out the stars a long time ago. Before the Greeks even interacted with those in South America, they mapped out the stars as well. That's the reason why they thought, oh, the Earth is going to end in 2012. All these different cultures mapped out everything before the Greeks did. We need to stop giving Greeks credit for everything that exists in the modern world. Come on. Um, but that's how history is. If you really look at history, it's the reason why they don't want to teach critical race theory because they'd rather say that white people invented everything and then everybody else did nothing. So, yeah, like we, we need to stop with that part, though. It's already been proven that that part of history is not true. Uh, let's see here. Artillery gunners next time. Let's see here. Hold a pencil in front of you. Looking down at the tip, rotate it so that the tip is spinning counterclockwise. Keep rotating with your fingers in the same direction as you slowly turn the pencil over and you're looking at its eraser. Now, the eraser will be spinning clockwise. Rotate it uh, slowly back while continuing to spin. will bring the tip to the top, rotating counterclockwise. That kind of like supports why the earth might be flat. Okay, so... That, that literally describes it right there, why the earth might be flat. Because if you look at it, this is what they're talking about. If you got a pencil, lay it flat. As you turn the pencil, the pencil rotates in this direction. Now, all you literally do is probably support the flat earth theory. Because then it would be that the earth will be flat, spinning and rotating, while the sun is moving in the opposite direction as well. So the sun's moving in the opposite direction, and but it's spinning the pencil at the same time. That could actually create all four seasons. Depending on the speed and the distance at which uh, both objects occur with each other. But yeah, this right here, no, bro. No, 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 bro. Oh, and for those people who talk about the moon, um, let's get a picture of the moon. This is hilarious. Because I've heard this on Flat Earth Theories uh, 2 before. Now let's go to images. Okay, let's look at the actual moon itself. Okay, so I need a good picture of the moon. I don't need, I don't need none of these weak, weak, weak pictures. Why the moon always got the exact same star spots, bro? Like, for real. And then this right here, this hole right here, what is that supposed to be? The North Pole, the moon? or No, the South Pole, the moon or something like that? That junk always tripped me out. This part right here, you know what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can get a bigger image. Give me a bigger image of the moon. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me, Wikipedia. This right here. This right. Oh, this is a really good image. 
this right here. Like, bro, is that supposed to be like the South Pole, the moon or some stuff like that? But anyway, that's not the reason why I got here. The reason why I got here is that people look at all these right here, right? I guess that's the North Pole of the moon. No, I'm kidding. Okay, people, man, that looked like a continent in itself right there. I wouldn't be surprised if these dark areas is actually water on the moon and these lit areas was actually like continents and stuff. Um, but when we look at the moon, we see all these indentations, right? And people are like, oh my God, it looks like that underwater. It looks so much like that underwater. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there's this thing called asteroids that fly throughout space. And Earth gets bombarded by asteroids this all the time, like literally all the time. The moon is a satellite which actually catches most of that debris. Now the moon doesn't have an atmosphere like the Earth. So when meteorites or asteroids, whatever you want to call them, come in contact with the atmosphere of the Earth, they burn up. Right? The moon doesn't have that same atmosphere. So they're going to hit directly on the moon's surface. That's where these come from. So these are these are not because it's the moon's underwater. Oh, it's under the ferment. No, that could also be from asteroids literally hitting the moon, which people don't realize the moon as a satellite protects us from most of the asteroids that try to or most of the meteors that try to hit our planet. While atmosphere takes care of the rest of them. Also, the Earth is used to balance out the gravity on Earth. That's the reason why at certain times they call what's called a moon tide. If the moon is at a certain distance, the tides will be higher. Versus as if it's further away, the tides will be lower. The reason why they be higher as the moon's closer is because the tides can be affected by the gravitational pull of the moon. I don't even know if that's fact. I'm just guessing that's what happens based on what I've seen. I, I, I'm not even know if that's actual fact. I'm going to just go ahead and put that out there. I'm guessing that's what happens. That's the reason why the tides do what they do. is Because if the moon's closer, I figure if the moon has its own gravitational pull, that's probably the reason why some of these asteroids are being pulled towards the moon instead of directly hitting the earth. I figure, hey, if it's closer, maybe that's what's affecting the tides. I don't, I don't know. Um, just tell me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Oh, oh. Like I said, this is open discussion anyways. But... I, I can't really agree with the earth being flat, completely flat. Because here's several things that would have to happen for the earth to be completely flat. One, we would have to describe how to have four seasons with a completely flat earth while the sun and moon are moving overhead, right? Now, even if the sun was over here, you know, even if the sun was over the, uh, uh, um, dang, what ocean is that? Pacific. Over the Pacific Ocean, Africa would still see some sunlight because the, the sun is up here. The sun would have to literally be way over here, right? Now, if we're looking at east and west, okay, so this line right here is supposed to be the break point of east and west, right? So if flat earth theory was true, this being the west coast of North America, over here you got China just being east, if this is the land of the rising sun, that would mean the sun has to go rotate all the way around this way and come back, right? But even as it's all rotate all the way around this way, there's still going to be some type of sunlight, bro, because it's flat. Like, oh my gosh, I wish I could. I wish I had a look. Perfect. Okay, these are on. I think the universe told me to do this. Okay. So, say for instance, this is the flat earth, right? We see that. If the sun's going overhead, oh my God, look, the whole entire surface, bro, is lit, right? The whole entire surface, bro, is lit, right? Now, if the sun's moving in this direction, if flat earth was so-called correct, there's going to be an area that's always dark, right? So, if I'm moving overhead... Look at the sun. I wish I could get closer. But if, we, if we're looking at the sun, the whole entire flat assert is going to be lit. Even if we go up ahead, right? We're coming up here. There's sunrise, right? Now, when that sunrise is in the east, the west is still going to be dark. 
right? Now look, the West is lit, it's getting brighter, getting brighter, getting brighter. Look what happens when it's overhead. The whole entire surface is lit, bro. The whole entire surface is lit. And then we go down here. Now it gets dark in the east. And then we come to the west. And then it's all dark. So at some point in time, either the earth is all dark or it's all lit up. So why is it that we got actual video images of it being dark in one area of the world, but being bright in other areas of the world around the same time? Like our 12 o'clock here and their 12 o'clock there can look completely different from each other. Our 12 o'clock noon here can be their 12 o'clock midnight over there. But is it lit over there at midnight? No, it's not. So either the earth, if it's if we're going to say it's flat, it's either got to have a certain curvature to it, which would allow the sun to be lit in certain areas and unlit in other areas. And not only the curvature, but to rotate and spin as the sun's going around. Right? So it has to rotate like this. At the same time the sun is coming around. Right? In order for the flat earth theory to be even a possible thing. I wish I can do an experiment right now just to see what I'm saying, but I'm doing it all in my head. But if the earth is sphere and it's a sphere, I can light this side, but the other side will be completely dark. You see what I'm saying? So if the sun is just sitting there as the earth rotates, the earth is lighting itself up. So now North America is on this side, away from the sun, it's dark. It's 12 o'clock midnight. Well, versus over here, it can be 12 o'clock noon, right? And it's lit up over here at high noon. That would be one way to prove that the earth is actually round. So I, I don't know what flat earthers were getting at, because I, like I said, at first I believed it. I said, oh, it might be. There's evidence. There's talking about the ferment and the water. It might be. Now, let's get on the ferment before I go. This is my belief. I believe there is a layer, a ferment, that is literally over the earth. Okay? Now, this, I'm just telling you what I